Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today I want to talk to you about a couple recent releases from the folks at Indicator over in the UK. Um, they put out a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, some of it is like American classics. And there's also a lot of British sort of classics or at least known films in the UK that may not have quite the same reputation in the States. And so I really respect that they... Um, you know, do exactly the films they want to do. They're trying to appeal to the audience they've cultivated, but at the same time, they're really wanting to put out films that they think are interesting or important or that they have some affection for. And the first one I'm going to start with today is one called One for the Road. This is from 2003, a low-budget, independently, you know, done kind of picture, uh, directed by a guy named Chris Cook who is part of, as I now understand it, a collective of filmmakers and actors in Nottingham in the UK. And it's a really neat group, you know. It reminds me a little bit of, not not exactly Mike Lee, but, you know, maybe somewhere between Cassavetes and Mike Lee and Kevin Smith uh, in that it's um, very low-budget films. In this case, this one's shot on DV cam. And um, they just have this community up there where they're sort of developing uh, and workshopping films and shorts and things like that. And sometimes getting sponsorship from Film 4 or um, I can't remember if the BFI picked up one of these or whatever. But it's one of those things where it's a neat community of folks that are just getting it done. And that's the kind of filmmaking that I respect. That's the kind of filmmaking... If I had a little more ambition, I would aspire to. Um, but this is a neat little movie. It is about four gentlemen who uh, are all at this like rehabilitation class for um, it's like it's like alcohol like it's an alcohol rehabilitation course, and they've all ended up there for one thing or another. But because they've ended up losing their driver's licenses. And they need to get their licenses back is at least part of it for some of them. Um, so you have a young guy who uh, has lost his father and who his dad left him a small, well, it's a warehouse that sort of a part of a business that he ran into the ground. And the kid wants to sell the warehouse and open some internet cafes and stuff. So he's got his thing going. Uh, then you have another younger guy who, uh, through a friend of his, they've sort of developed this other DIY business where they um, they have sort of a self-service cab company. This company that they, it's just him and this other guy in the guy's car and they drive around and pick up people who are trying to hail cabs uh, and he sits in the front with a cell phone. It's a very interesting arrangement. It's kind of funny. Um, the third guy is played by Rupert Proctor. Um, a somewhat known British actor um, who is like a sort of a down on his, his luck salesman. And he's got a troubled marriage, we find out. He's funny, but he's abrasive. Uh, and then the last guy is played by a known British character actor by the name of uh, Hywell Bennett, who is in like Twisted Nerve and a bunch of um, pretty high profile British films in the 60s and I want to say 70s. I can't remember if he did work in the 50s or not. But he is sort of like, you can't really see him in this picture, but he's the guy that's the most known of any of the actors in the film. But you can feel that it's got a certain like improvisational energy to it. There's a comedy to it, but there's also a good amount of sort of pathos. And the, these characters are all kind of lost in one way or another. Um, but it has a lot of funny moments. And I definitely responded to that. Um, it opens interestingly too, and it opens with a scene of a pool that slowly comes into focus. We realize what will be the four characters we're going to deal with are in the scene, but we don't know them yet. And at the end of that scene, this is literally just basically the credits of the movie, something a little more sinister is happening, and it leads us to believe that we could be building up to something not great happening, but it goes away for so long from that scene that you kind of forget about it because it becomes this other thing you become invested in these characters and then it just sort of comes back and you're like oh yeah 
what was happening in that scene. I didn't fully get it. And I love the way it comes back. I love the way the film ends. And it's, um, it's really interesting in that way. So uh, definitely a little indie that I'd never heard of that I can totally see why Indicator wanted to put out. And they did a heck of a job with this Blu-ray because they put out a ton of features here, including audio commentary with the director and his producer uh, and um, his co-producer as well. Uh, and then there's an actor commentary with some of the actors. There is... Uh, those are from like a 2004 release of some kind. There's a new one for the road oral history, which is about 42 minutes, which is like sit down interviews with all the main cast that's still alive. Uh, Howell Bennett is no longer with us, but they sort of go through how they got involved with the project, their memories of it, their memories of working with each other. So they have some Howell Bennett stories, which are great. Um, and yeah, they just start sort of talk about the process and Chris Cook's sort of talks about that community in Nottingham and, you know, just all kinds of neat stuff there. And then what's also included here is like workshop footage, uh, character studies. These are improvisation exercises that a couple of the actors did. Um, video diaries that Cook and his DP developed uh, is a document of them de developing a new project after One for the Road um, with a couple of the actors, one of the actors from this film. Um, and then they have, uh, f like four or five of Chris Cook's shorts. These are video shorts. Um, and a couple of them have commentary. There's map of the scars from 1998, 11 minute short, uh, that has commentary. There's shifting units from 2000, which is a really great addition because it includes Rupert Proctor who plays the salesman in this movie and he's playing the salesman in that short. And in fact, it's the short and the development of the character through that short that would lead to this film. So you get to see Proctor basically playing the same guy and almost like a prequel to this movie. And I think it's a really interesting inclusion because Pro Proctor's very good at this character. I mean, he's like, he can be abrasive and everything, but, but he's good. Um, so it's cool that they included that. Uh, and that has a commentary on it. Then there's Why I Hate Parties But Pretend to Love Them from 2003, an 11-minute short, um, written by one of the actors uh, in this film. Uh, Gary the Rapper versus Stefan Blix from 2014, a 14-minute short, uh, directed by one of the actors from this movie. Um, and then Whiskers and Jane from 2016, co-written by one of the actors and I think directed by Chris Cook. Um, then there's a limited edition 36 page booklet with a new essay. And these booklets are always, here's the um, alternate. Um, so these booklets are always really solid. Like it's a nice matted, it's a beauty, right? So clearly a movie that meant something to somebody over at it, Indicator and just a kind of an inspirational movie in that it's like, get out there and make your movie, shoot it on video, shoot it on your iPhone, whatever. Um, but this is like 20 years ago. So, so cool stuff and neat indie that I enjoyed and, um, you know, has more than comedy, has some thoughtful lost characters that I, you know, I got into. We'll put it like that. Uh, and then lastly, we have... This box set, Stanley Long's Adventures, uh, 70 sex comedy threesome. This includes Adventures of a Taxi Driver, Adventures of a Private Eye, and Adventures of a Plumber's Mate. Now, Stanley Long was uh, over at the website, they say, the once dubbed the king of sexploitation by the tabloid press. Stanley Long uh, was the godfather of the British sex film starting out with 8mm striptease reels in the 1950s before moving into nudist documentaries. Long went on to produce and direct a string of extremely popular X-rated movies, which told tales of wife swapping, groupies, and of saucy other saucy goings-on. He reached the pinnacle of commercial success with this trio of incredibly successful on-the-job sex comedies. And Adventures of the Taxi Driver, which is the first one, stars an actor named Barry Evans. And Barry Evans uh, was a sitcom actor. And so this one sort of sets the template 
for the other three films that we get in this set. And, you know, there's there's nothing too groundbreaking, but they are cheeky, silly, um, funny, sexy comedies. Um, but this cabbie is sort of, <laughs> they say he gets more than his fair share. Um, and it says, as well as becoming... It secured international distribution as well as becoming the most successful comedy at the British box office in 1976, and it prompted the two sequels, uh, featuring more of the same, with but with a different lead actor. Future hit record producer Christopher Neal stars in the second two. Um, but it's a goofy sort of setup. You know, that this Barry Evans character is a taxi driver. He breaks the fourth wall, <clears throat> and he talks to the camera. Which is a fun touch. I always enjoy films that do that. But so he'll he'll be commenting on a situation as it's happening. He will be sort of narrating, uh, and he gets into just goofy, you know, anecdotes, sort of situations where in he ends up being naked with a woman. And the classic Stanley Long thing is that they set up uh, a sexy scene that is then interrupted by a husband, a boyfriend, or some other thing. So that, you know, there's no consummation, if you will. It's always just, you know, sexy stuff and then interruption. And that's sort of the movie, you know? I mean, it's it's fun to see how they create these situations. And, um, you know, there's lots of features on this. They really did a nice job with all the features. Uh, one of the features you get with all three films is a commentary from Stanley Long himself, recorded, I think, in 2008. So probably from a DVD at some point. But... They're kind of see and say commentaries, but they do have him explaining not only production history stuff, but also like his ideas for setting up this kind of comedy. You know, like this is what we're gonna do. This is this is why this is happening. Oh, he got paint on himself. They're gonna get in the bathtub. You know that kind of stuff. In fact, there's one running joke where he's in a bathtub with a woman, the taxi driver, and the husband keeps coming in, and they had to come up with reasons for him to come back into the room like six times, and and Stanley uh, Long says that in the theater that just ripped up. Like people just lost their minds laughing at that stuff. And I can definitely see how it's pretty funny. Um, you know, but, you know, they're not like pretending to be works of arts. They're just goofy, sexy comedies. And I think it's interesting for folks in the U.S. who aren't as familiar with this series to get a chance to check these out. Because obviously these are known and beloved in the U.K., and in fact, um, I think it's on this one. or No, it might be on the second disc. I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, this disc has a lot of nice features here. Um, like I said, the commentary. Uh, there's something called The Best of the Adventures, a 1981 87-minute feature-length compilation of extracts from all three films in the Adventure series made for the nascent videotape market and hosted by journalist and broadcaster Peter Noble. And then we have a three-part BHP interview, BEHP interview with Stanley Long. Uh, each part, this is from 1999, each part is about 90 minutes long. So you get, you know, uh, like four and a half hours of Stanley Long talking about with Dennis Gifford and Emmanuel Yaspa about his career and all these things. So that's that's pretty cool that they use those. There's something called Pete Sinclair's Peter Sinclair's Camera, which is a 15-minute thing with a cinematographer from this year talking about his work with Stanley Long uh, and Pete Walker and his move to Los Angeles. Um, <clears throat> so that's that one. Then we have Adventures of a Private Eye. These are the ones that star Christopher Neal. So that's Adventures of a Private Eye. And this is where we, we again, we have comment. I mean, there's not too much to the plots of these that I can really, you know, it's just like situation. You'll see that's the, the template. It's literally that. In terms of taxi driver to private eye to plumber's mate, it sets up this idea of like this, this main character will get into situations where he's getting naked with women and he gets interrupted and it just goes on and on. But again, it's cute in that there's this fourth wall breaking stuff happening and um, it's got a good energy to it. And I, I can see why they were successful at the time. Um, anyway, so this one has the second part of the BEHP interview with Stanley Long. It has a commentary with Long. Uh, it has something called Stanley by Simon, which is a 19 minute 
featurette documentary thing on Long's, that's Long's biographer Simon Sheridan recalling his close friendship with the undisputed king of sexploitation. Um, Then we have something, this is where we get into the sort of notoriety of these films and that they have parodies. Uh, There's something called on this disc, can you keep it up with this and that for another, um, (laughs) sorry, can you keep it up with this, that, and the other for a week? That's from 2004. It's a 16 minute short by uh, Jan Manthe. Uh, affectionate short film homage to these comedies of the 70s. And there's two of these. And this has a commentary on it uh, from writer director Jan Manthe uh, with the actors involved in this one. Um, so that's cool. And then in Plumber's Mate, we get uh, another commentary, uh, another part of the BHP inter- BEHP interview with Stanley Long something called Dear Prudence from 2022, a 14-minute uh, featurette. Uh, Prudence Drage, one of Long's favorite performers, tells colorful stories uh, about her extensive career as an actor and singer and working with him, you know, so that's fun. Uh, then you get the other parody film. It's called The Adventures of a Plumber in Outer Space from 2008, also directed by Jan Manthe, uh, follow-up to the affectionate British sex comedy can you keep it up with this, that, and the other for a week? Featuring a cameo appearance by Long. Uh, and this one also has a commentary. Uh, and these are all Blu-ray debuts. And the booklet, which is not even a booklet. It's a full-on book. And you also get a nice poster as well. Uh, I'll just cover that up. Uh, so you have a nice... It's like a full-on book, right? There's um, a taxi driver in the back. And it's got a uh, an exclusive 80-page book with a new essay by Simon Sheridan, archival interviews with Stanley Long, an actor-composer Christopher Neal, a letter from the producers uh, complaining about the Adventures film's treatment in the British press, newspaper articles, a look at the three films' novelizations, and an overview of contemporary critical responses, uh, Manthe on his short films and film credits. So it's a very thorough and loving set uh, dedicated to these films, which I would think were very formative for a lot of folks in the UK pre-internet in terms of their cheekiness, in terms of the nudity, you know, uh, for us in the States, maybe it was something on HBO. Um, For the UK, it might have been one of these films. Um, So, like I said, I love that Indicator does just what they want and you know, asks us to go along with them based on their reputation that they've established so well. And so this is worth a, ch- worth a try. You know, if this doesn't seem like it's up your alley, I would say it's pretty fun, pretty silly. And again, a very thorough look and examination with the filmmaker. And, you know, I can see why they went the extra mile on this. I can see that these films would be fun and beloved to folks in the UK. So that is Stanley Long's Adventures uh, 70s sex comedy threesome along with uh, of course one for the road a couple new ones from the folks at indicator head over to indicator their website powerhousefilms.co.uk to check out what they are up to including a new film noir box set with um Harvey bogart uh another really cool looking release of the swimmer uh madigan there's all kinds of great stuff happening from Indicator, so I, I encourage you to check them out as they're one of my favorite labels out there at the moment. Uh, and so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.